The Blessed Virgin Mary by St. John Vianney. In this edition of SOS, Sermons of Saints, a catechism on the Blessed Virgin Mary is given by the Cure of Ours, narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. These sermons of St. John Vianney are in the public domain. All of the pictures used in this video are also in the public domain. Catechism on the Blessed Virgin by St. John Vianney. The Father takes pleasure in looking upon the heart of the Most Holy Virgin Mary as the masterpiece of His hands, for we always like our own work, especially when it is done well. The Son takes pleasure in it as the heart of His Mother, the source from which He drew the blood that ransomed us, the Holy Ghost as His temple. The prophets published the glory of Mary before her birth. They compared her to the Son. Indeed, the apparition of the Holy Virgin may well be compared to a beautiful gleam of sun on a foggy day. Before her coming, the anger of God was hanging over our heads like a sword ready to strike us. As soon as the Holy Virgin appeared upon the earth, his anger was appeased. She did not know that she was to be the mother of God, and when she was a little child, she used to say, when shall I then see that beautiful creature who is to be the mother of God? The Holy Virgin has brought us forth twice, in the Incarnation and at the foot of the cross. She is then doubly our mother. The Holy Virgin is often compared to a mother, but she is much better still than the best of mothers. For the best of mothers sometimes punishes her child when it displeases her, and even beats it. She thinks she is doing right. But the Holy Virgin does not so. She is so good that she treats us with love and never punishes us. The heart of this good mother is all love and mercy. She desires only to see us happy. We have only to turn to her to be heard. The son has his justice. The mother has nothing but her love. God has loved us so much as to die for us, but in the heart of our Lord there is justice, which is an attribute of God. In that of the Most Holy Virgin there is nothing but mercy. Her Son being ready to punish a sinner, Mary interposes, checks the sword, implores pardon for the poor criminal. Mother, our Lord says to her, I can refuse you nothing. If hell could repent, you would obtain its pardon. The Most Holy Virgin places herself between her Son and us. The greater sinners we are, the more tenderness and compassion does she feel for us. The child that has cost its mother most tears is the dearest to her heart. Does not a mother always run to the help of the weakest and the most exposed to danger? Is not a physician in the hospital most attentive to those who are most seriously ill? The heart of Mary is so tender towards us that those of all the mothers in the world put together are like a piece of ice in comparison to hers. See how good the Holy Virgin is! Her great servant, St. Bernard, used often to say to her, I salute thee, Mary. One day, this good mother answered him, I salute thee, my son Bernard. The Ave Maria is a prayer that is never wearisome. The devotion to the Holy Virgin is delicious, sweet, nourishing. When we talk on earthly subjects or politics, we grow weary. But when we talk of the Holy Virgin, it is always new. All the saints have a great devotion to Our Lady. No grace comes from heaven without passing through her hands. We cannot go into a house without speaking to the porter. Well, the Holy Virgin is the portress of heaven. When we have to offer anything to a great personage, we get it presented by the person he likes best, in order that the homage may be agreeable to him. So our prayers have quite a different sort of merit when they are presented by the Blessed Virgin, because she is the only creature who has never offended God. 
The Blessed Virgin alone has fulfilled the first commandment to adore God only and love him perfectly. She fulfilled it completely. All that the Son asks of the Father is granted him. All that the Mother asks of the Son is in like manner granted to her. When we have handled something fragrant, our hands perfume whatever they touch. Let our prayers pass through the hands of the Holy Virgin. She will perfume them. I think that at the end of the world, the Blessed Virgin will be very tranquil. But while the world lasts, we drag her in all directions. The Holy Virgin is like a mother who has a great many children. She is continually occupied in going from one to the other. The Service of the Blessed Virgin If I wanted to, I would show you that in all walks of life there have been great servants of the Blessed Virgin. I would find for you, among them, those who begged their bread from door to door. I would find for you, among them, those who lived in much the same sort of state in life as many of you. I would find them for you among the wealthy, and in great number, too. We read in the Gospel that our Lord always treated people with great tenderness, except for one type of people whom he treated with severity. These were the Pharisees and they were so treated because they were proud and hardened in sin. They would willingly have hindered, if they could, the accomplishment of the will of the Father. What is more, our Lord called them whited sepulchres, hypocrites, brood of vipers, offspring of vipers, who devour the breasts of their mothers. We can say the same thing on the subject of devotion to the Blessed Virgin. All Christians have a great devotion to Mary, except those old and hardened sinners who, for a very long time, having lost the faith, wallow in the slime of their brute passions. The devil tries to keep them in this state of blindness until that moment when death opens their eyes. Ah, if they had but the happiness to have recourse to Mary, they would not fall into hell as will happen to them. No, my dear children, let us not imitate such people. On the contrary, let us follow the footsteps of all those true servants of Mary. Belonging to this number were St. Charles Borromeo, who always said his rosary on his knees. What is more, he fasted on all vigils of the feasts of the Blessed Virgin. He was so careful about saluting her on the stroke of the bell that when the Angelus rang, wherever he was, he went down on his knees, sometimes even in the middle of the road when it was full of mud. He desired that his whole diocese should have a great devotion to Mary and that her name would be uttered everywhere with the utmost respect. He had a number of chapels built in her honor. Now then, my dear brethren, why should we not imitate these great saints who obtained so many graces from Mary to preserve them from sin? Have we not the same enemies to fight, the same heaven to hope for? Yes, Mary always has her eyes upon us. Do we suffer temptations? Let us turn our hearts towards Mary, and we shall be delivered. End of St. John Vianney's Catechism on the Blessed Virgin Mary Narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss new content. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and or by buying one of my books. My ebooks are available on Amazon as well as on the Apple Bookstore. For those who prefer a physical copy rather than an ebook, my book Spiritual Warfare Know Thy Enemy is also available as a paperback on Amazon. If you are interested in making a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by simply buying one of my books. I am thankful for your support. 
links to Patreon and to my books will be posted in the comments section of this video. The continuation of this work isn't possible without you. Lastly, and most importantly, please pray for me. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you. Thank <laughs> you.